Hi. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, hi, guys. So, um, welcome. Uh, my name is Andre Sherra. Uh, I'm the VP of Development at uh, VM Turbo. And I want to talk about uh, some of the experiences we had as we work with a number of our uh, large customers across various industries that are rolling out uh, uh, OpenStack-based virtual infrastructure and, and how we've been helping them, what challenges we, they faced, and, and how they um, assure the performance of the applications running in their environment. Um, so um, I don't know how much, how much you guys have uh, heard about VM Turbo. Um, we've been around for, we started the company in 2009. Um, uh, we've got about 1,300 uh, enterprise customers, or large, mid-size uh, enterprise customers running a variety of uh, um, uh, infrastructure relative data centers based on usually a mix of different technologies from uh, KVM, OpenStack to uh, VMware as well as public cloud options uh, between Amazon, Azure. Uh, and we've been helping them to assure the performance of their applications by providing them with a control system. A control system that is able to understand the demand that uh, comes from their applications and how to match it to the supply of the infrastructure they're running. And, and uh, it's uh, very interesting how we could actually assure the performance of the applications in a, a, a large OpenStack environment, uh, very much like in other environments as well. Um, so just to get a bit of a feel, so how many of you guys are running OpenStack in production? <coughs> very cool. And uh, uh, in terms of size of the infrastructure, um, anybody with less than, you know, say 200 servers? Uh, I'm sorry, more than 200 servers, maybe. Okay, cool, more than 100 servers. Very cool. Um, and and um, how many of you are running uh, relatively important production mission critical applications? Okay, cool. Uh, so so what we see is, is actually interesting to, to attend uh, a series of uh, OpenStack summits as well as to talk to um, a number of OpenStack customers over the last couple of years and, and see the adoption growing in enterprises uh, from financial to technology to telco. And, and, and we actually have a pretty good uh, spread of all of those customers. Um, and, and, and how it's increasingly more important to be able to make sure that the applications that you're deploying are not only agile there, can be deployed quickly, but they actually provide the level of service that the, the users are, are expecting. So, so as we are uh, talking to customers, um, we, we've seen a number of interesting challenges in terms of how do you manage this workload, how do you assure the performance, uh, of, the, of the applications and, and a number of shortcomings that while the technology that OpenStack out of the box provides is really good in terms of making it easy to, to spin up additional workload, there are limitations in, in both how do you decide initially where to place an application, how do you continuously assure the application performance, um, both in terms of um, 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 uh, de deciding where to run the workload, as well as how to uh, choose the right flavors for the right workload. Um, and, and, and really what we want to help people with is to be able to run uh, OpenStack with KVM as an enterprise private cloud. Um, it basically offer it as a viable production, large scale, uh, high density uh, virtual infrastructure, uh, much like other technologies that people have been running in the data center in the past. Um, and, and, and basically to contribute to OpenStack and as well as to uh, add on our commercial um, offering to, to continuously provide uh, this application assurance, to provide intelligent workload management and control uh, in, in the environment. Um, now, just a bit about what VM Turbo does to give you a bit of a perspective. So, so basically, VM Turbo is a control system that plugs into all the layers of the data center stack from applications down to the infrastructure and it's aware of the different workload that you're running in the environment constantly and in real time, and it basically matches it to the underlying infrastructure, allocating resources as well as scaling the necessary resources to constantly meet the demand in real time across a combination of dimensions. Uh, most obviously, um, you know, compute storage and memory as well as cost, business uh, policies, compliance. And uh, there's a couple of use cases that I wanted to uh, point out in, in, in a way that we can help uh, OpenStack to provide this production uh, service, building on the, 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 the strengths that OpenStack already has, but providing this intelligent workload management capability on top of it. And, and by the way, at any point you've got questions, feel free to just uh, stop me and ask. I think there are a couple of microphones out there. Um, 
So uh, one, one thing that's uh, you know, most uh, obviously a, a, a question as you offer, especially as you offer self-service uh, capabilities, um, you, you need to decide uh, where to deploy these VMs. Do you have enough capacity? Um, and, and what's the best place for that uh, workload to run initially as well as going forward? And, and obviously you can't rely on humans to do this because you want this to be agile, you want this to be uh, <coughs> self-service and fully automated. Um, <coughs> Uh, and, and, and what we see from customers as they, they roll out uh, large-scale infrastructure, they actually want to differentiate their services. They want to offer uh, different tiers of services and guarantee the performance of those workloads respectively across a, a shared environment. Uh, <coughs> you could do this by segmenting your environment, but you end up wasting a bunch of money because some of your uh, infrastructure is going to be overutilized, some underutilized, and you may not still assure the performance of the applications. Uh, and there's a number of other interesting use cases. As you run production environments, you have to worry about software licensing. How do you not only uh, make sure that you're initially deploying the workload in the right place, but it continues to comply with your uh, software license uh, uh, cost, um, and, and at the same time, of course, uh, perform? Um, we, have, we have seen a number of customers uh, managing affinity and anti-affinity. And again, it's something that you have to uh, continuously uh, control, not just in terms of when you choose to deploy the first instance of application, but as you continue to manage, especially a large uh, high-density OpenStack environment. Um, and, and there are a number of interesting technologies. Uh, there, there's a series of sessions on the uh, evolution of live migration and, 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 and even block migration in terms of the, the various vendors, storage vendors that are providing you better and better support. It gives you a good ability to choose any hardware, any compute, any storage that you want. Um, at the same time, it enables you to um, decide where to run your applications. Sorry. Um, and, and, and to find the best place uh, for your uh, workloads, such as making use of uh, local storage um, and still provide uh, the mobility to be able to decide and actually control where your applications run uh, within your data center. Um, and, and, and this also helps us to uh, provide better uh, uh, maintenance of the infrastructure. There are cases where you do have to do some uh, maintenance, but you want to make sure that even while you are doing maintenance, your workload continues to run in, in places where it's able to get the resources that it needs. So it's just not just e evacuating the host and blindly putting them someplace else, but you actually find the best place for your workload to run while you're doing maintenance uh, on these hosts. Um, so, uh, to, to be able to do this, um, VM Turbo contributes and takes advantage of both the instrumentation as well as the control points that are available in OpenStack. Uh, so, so we have contributed a number of uh, uh, bases to, to Nova, um, Scylometer, and, and to the API um, uh, to, to be able to get the necessary metrics to understand what the real-time workload demand is. Uh, for example, how much disk, how much memory, how much CPU resources are constantly in real time actually required for each one of your applications, as well as how your host and storage environment is being utilized. And based on this, make decisions, both in terms of the initial scheduling decisions uh, to decide where to place the workload in terms of computer and storage, as well as to, uh, for example, live migrate the workload if it's a stateless workload, a st stateful workload, uh, to find the best place uh, where it should run. And, and, and uh, we are basically relying for uh, core projects primarily um, uh, between Nova Cinder, of course, Neutron, uh, and, and Scylometer uh, for the instrumentation and, and for these uh, control points. Any comments or questions so far? Because I'm probably rattling through too many slides. Or not. Um, and, and, and this is uh, you know, just a screenshot uh, fr from our user interface where VM Turbo is in real time controlling what applications are running where, what virtual machine instances are running where in the environment, how much resources they, are, uh, uh, they need to be able to perform, and what's the best place for them to uh, provide those resources, uh, both in terms of what applications are running on your VM instances, what is the most appropriate flavor um, uh, for those instances to uh, to, to match the application demand with the understanding of the underlying infrastructure capabilities. So you don't want to choose a huge flavor and then run out of resources. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, find the best place for each of these instances to run, I'm sorry, uh, within uh, the environment, both in terms of uh, compute and storage, 
So, so what VM Turbo ends up driving is a series of actions that are in a closed loop control being fed back into the OpenStack environment uh, in automated closed loop control and, and not only showing you um, where your workload should run, how it should be configured, but it actually does it for you. So it basically constantly controls the environment um, and, and make sure that your application demand is met by the appropriate supply of your infrastructure. Um, so, um, so, so to some extent, uh, sorry, <laughs> some extent they are. Uh, so, if you are, if you have uh, shared Cinder services, then you've got uh, complete freedom on where to uh, move uh, your application. Um, if it's uh, uh, running on local storage, we are actually going to do block migration to, to move it to uh, another host together with its uh, storage. So we are aware of the dependencies between your compute and storage connectivity and, and, and able to find the best place for your workload and orchestrate and drive your, uh, the, 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 the actions, drive the API calls to make sure that you, of course, don't break your application while you're finding the best place for it to run. Um, and, and, and by the way, none of these things are really completely independent. So, so, so you want to make sure that you, know, you, you, you understand the full stack, and this is really one of the most important points that we are making, while OpenStack is primarily focused on providing IAS um, uh, to your end users. Um, what, what VM Turbo really uh, provides is controlling the full stack, understanding your application uh, utilization, your application scale out, match that to what virtual instances you're running, how those should be configured, where those virtual instances uh, should be running across your compute and storage, and we're actually driving the scale out of your compute and your storage as well. So if you have the ability to bring on additional nodes, um, especially if you've got a uh, uh, software-driven uh, data center, not just the uh, IAS that you're providing, uh, or poss possibly scale your infrastructure back um, to provide a grid and data center, if you don't need all of that compute or storage resources. Um, and uh, I, I mentioned that there are a number of uh, uh, places where, sorry, uh, where we actually contributed code back. Um, uh, so our, our philosophy in general that all of the instrumentation uh, that is there in VM Turbo, uh, that, that is there in OpenStack should be in open source. So if we find that there are additional metrics that can enable us to drive better um, uh, decisions, and control the environment better. They may be useful for someone else as well. So I've been contributing those codes. They have been actually accepted uh, into downstream uh, distribution pretty much by kilo, I think. Uh, so they've been out there for a while. Um, and, and of course, we uh, make uh, use of them. We also have uh, been uh, contributing to the OpenStack Java um, API and, and, and adding additional capability um, as we end up both getting information as well as controlling actions back through the API into uh, OpenStack, and, and at the end of the day, um, you get better visibility into your uh, environment, um, and um, uh, additional components that we are contributing continues to be um, uh, available on our uh, GitHub uh, repository, um, and, and feel free to comment on them, or improve them, or fork them, or make them better. Um, I actually have one more slide if anybody interested in, in, in more details on specific uh, uh, blueprints and, and reviews. And if you want to drill down, of course, you could get this through Stackalytics as well. Uh, so I think the slides are going to be uh, available uh, later. Um, and then uh, I thought that uh, maybe we should do a quick demo as well. But before I jump over, any other comments or questions? All right, um, so, um, so I actually have two tabs. Uh, one is a uh, Horizon dashboard. It's just, uh, I think this happens to be uh, Kilo, but in any case, uh, any OpenStack environment, obviously, uh, we are contributing and able to control um, anything since Icehouse. Um, and, and, and another tab that shows our user interface, um, our our platform that provides this control capability is uh, commercial and closed source. Uh, you can spin it up in Amazon or Azure. You can run it in your private data center 
all the components that uh, are part of OpenStack are open source. In fact, they are part of the downstream distribution. So practically, you could deploy our software either on your public or your private cloud. And as long as you have access to the OpenStack API without any modification, without any agents, you're able to um, provide this um, real-time uh, workload management, real-time control capability on, on top of your OpenStack. Um, and, and as I was pointing out earlier, uh, <coughs> the, sorry, the goal of our software is to provide this control capabilities across all the stack, um, all the stacks in your data center, uh, all the way from the user-facing load balanced virtual applications to scale the application instances that you have. Uh, and then what becomes a bit more relevant for <coughs> OpenStack is, is uh, how do you uh, find where to start these virtual machines, what configuration, what flavors these virtual machines should have, what compute and storage providers uh, they should uh, run on, um, and also uh, manage uh, the, the tenants or virtual data centers uh, in your private cloud. VM Turbo otherwise uh, also manages the same across public cloud zones and regions. Um, and if it's a private cloud, it also manages the underlying uh, compute and network and storage uh, fabric across a variety of, of different technologies that you might have in your environment. But really the end result is based on all of the information that we get from the environment is to drive actions to, to decide you know, where a particular uh, uh, workload uh, should run uh, to be able to navigate across uh, the environment and, and see, of course, the relationship between all of these entities and in the context of that relationship make the right decisions. Um, so um, to, to jump over to OpenStack for a second, so this is, of course, a single instance of our software controls multiple and multiple hybrid environments. I'm actually managing two OpenStack and one VMware environment uh, fr from this instance. So if I actually drill in here, um, I have, uh, this happens to be a VMware data center, this happens to be a, um, a Juno environment, uh, sorry, not Juno, uh, anyway, uh, one kilo, one Juno, I think, uh, two, two different OpenStack environments all controlled by a, a same instance of, of VM Turbo being aware of uh, whatever is running uh, in, in this environment and, and, and what actions we should drive to make sure that they are available. Uh, <coughs> so um, uh, if, 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 so to, to the previous use cases that I mentioned, if you want to make sure that you are not only making the right decisions on where to uh, start the workload, but where do you um, want to continuously uh, assure the performance of those applications run those workload in the environment, then uh, any control system, in this case VM Turbo, has to be aware of, of a number of other constraints that are otherwise available in uh, OpenStack. It's just that this control function is missing for them. So for example, if I want to um, limit where do I run Windows uh, workload to these three hosts and where do I run Linux workload, so I'm into these two hosts and notice that some of them are overlapping because some hosts I licensed for, for both. Um, VM Turbo is aware of, of uh, um, these um, um, Linux and uh, uh, Windows uh, tags. Um, so these are my Linux hosts, these are my uh, Windows hosts. Um, and, and as we decide to uh, to, to start additional workload. Uh, it is not only controlling where this workload should start, but continuously finds the best place um, uh, for your uh, instances to run. So it only migrates them within those tags, which is pretty much the same thing that is available through most of the other scheduler drivers, except they are only making decisions for the initial deploy. And there is no easy way to continuously assure that whoever logs into an environment doesn't break it and move a VM to a different place or uh, ends up deploying it in the wrong place uh, by, by some other accident. Um, so, so otherwise, in terms of the end user experience, it's pretty much the same as, as uh, what you would have for uh, any other um, user. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, so let's say I want to deploy 10 new VMs. I'm going to put them on a public uh, network. And, and uh, OpenStack is going to um, uh, schedule this workload the same way as, as it would everything else. But if you're looking at the 
um, uh, scheduler driver, um, what, what it's going to do is um, it's, it's actually going to, uh, from the scheduler, continuously communicate with the VM Turbo instance, find uh, the best place for each instance to run in the context of where, uh, what constraints you have, what flavors you have, and what's the actual current real-time utilization of your infrastructure decides where to uh, spawn these VMs and, of course, feed that back into uh, Nova to, to actually um, spawn those VMs in the right place and, at the same time, uh, discover those VMs and then start to monitor their real-time uh, resource uh, demand and match them to the uh, best place where they should run based on their ongoing resource demand as well as based on the ongoing constraints that you see from the environment in terms of how your hosts are available and, of course, all the other business or licensing constraints that you have defined. So uh, what we see here is basically the scheduler just chugging through each of the instances that I'm, I'm, I'm starting and, and feeding that back into uh, OpenStack. And you see uh, the instances starting on the various hosts that uh, <coughs> sorry, VM Turbo decides to uh, start them on. So, of course, you end up uh, seeing the instances running as you would in any other OpenStack environment. Um, and, and if I <coughs> go back to VM Turbo, we'll, we'll end up seeing a uh, growing number of uh, instances uh, showing up. As, uh, like these guys, uh, we, we start to uh, uh, collect metrics through Scylometer about their actual resource utilization and then continue to uh, match them to the best available supply across the hosts uh, that are available in the environment, uh, which, whichever is providing the best combination of resources that they need in the context of everything that they are, are using, CPU, memory, um, um, storage, network, IO, uh, IO uh, resources. And then, of course, from, from there on, as well as with any new workload, VM2 will continue to do this forever, as long as you're running your data center. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> any questions or comments? Okay, so, so I think the question was how do you control the scheduler uh, beyond what's uh, available? So on one hand, uh, there are a number of options that are available in OpenStack natively, uh, such as affinity, anti-affinity uh, rules, uh, tags on the flavors and the host aggregates. All of those are picked up by VM Turbo. So whatever you comp co uh, configure in OpenStack are, are available um, um, out of the box in VM Turbo. In fact, they are being respected uh, out of the box uh, in VM Turbo. Uh, if you want, you can define additional uh, workload placement uh, policies that ends up becoming part of our abstraction. So you can choose, for example, that I want um, a um, certain group of uh, VMs um, to, sorry, uh, to run, uh, for example, on a certain group of uh, compute or, or, or storage providers. Um, uh, you could uh, limit the number of instances that you want to run together. You could choose to make sure that, that, they, they, that you never place certain workload uh, in, in certain uh, resources. So you actually can layer on top of what you get already out of the box with OpenStack additional constraints uh, that might allow you to define additional business policies that you may not have captured in, in OpenStack. Obviously, all of these capabilities in VM Turbo will work across multiple OpenStack implementations. In fact, it will work across multiple virtual infrastructures that you run, not only across multiple private data centers, but across the combination of your hybrid cloud, uh, your public cloud, and your uh, uh, private cloud usage. So you could define business policies or business constraints that go across your whole hybrid data center uh, on top of what OpenStack already exposes. There was another question. Yeah, question. Uh, Nodir from Zero Stack. Hi. Um, let me start from the abstract you provided and talk you gave. Uh, 
uh, what is the ultra high density workload here? Sh sure. So, so in general, what we see is that um, if I click back to my slides for a second, um, is is that um, um, most of our customers uh, started out before they talked to VM Turbo. Uh, solving these problems by segmenting their infrastructure, creating a separate host aggregate for Windows workload, creating a separate host aggregate for tier one, a separate host aggregate for, for tier two, and most of them end up wasting a large part of their infrastructure. So really uh, what, we are, what we are offering to them is an ability to provide this real-time control that allows them to share the same infrastructure, respect the constraints, but actually achieve a much higher utilization of their infrastructure and still both comply with your business constraints as well as meet your real-time resource demand. I see. Okay, so it's less about workload, but it's about the ability, like, don't let idle hosts stay there. Well, Combine yeah. Combine them, do not aggregate, but run together. Yeah, so I mean, I in general, uh, in terms of, we don't really have a preference on how much you want to utilize the infrastructure. I think in general, we heard from most of our customers, they want to be greener. They also want to minimize their capital costs. They want to provide a, a viable uh, alternative in their private data center to public options, so they find the right balance on where to spend their money. Um, some, some of our customers, you know, um, trading financial institutions may run at a lower level of utilization, but they still want to utilize their hardware as well as they could, and some of the service providers run at a much higher uh, level of utilization. So it's really up to them what high density means in their environment, but by allowing them to run on a much larger liquidity pool and a much larger shared infrastructure, they're able to better utilize the infrastructure that they have, and of course, assure the performance of their apps. Sure, I have two more questions. If anyone has a question, go there and I'll stop. Otherwise, I, I'll keep going. So the second one is QoS. Yes. You uh, said uh, the market identification algorithm lets you do, lets you provide QoS on uh, Nova and Cinder. Can you elaborate more on it? Sure. Uh, so, so there's a couple of things. Uh, one is that um, um, by continuously being aware of what resources any particular instance needs and find the best place to run them, we're going to make sure that every application performs as well as it could. Now, if you've got a lot of resources, that's probably fine. Uh, what we see a number of our customers is that they actually want to run on less infrastructure, which means that occasionally they've got uh, various dynamic workloads that are spiking at different times. How do you combine um, workload that's supposed to provide a higher level of service with other workload that's uh, providing a lower level of service. Um, so really we, we look at this as two ways. One is that there are built-in capabilities in OpenStack that are, for example, allow you to um, assign CPU shares to various flavors. We actually take advantage of that and, and we are finding a way to combine different workloads with different CPU shares so that you end up mixing the right combination of workload so let's say that you've got a gold tier of service with X number of CPU, CPU shares and you've got you know, bronze with half as much. Uh, how do you combine them together? So even if they spike, you can uh, assure that the, the gold workload gets its resources um, uh, where, where the bronze workload may not get its uh, CPU shares. Um, so, so what we do is we basically pick up CPU share specs from the uh, flavor, we, we, we look at how much, uh, uh, how many instances have already been provisioned across your host and together with your real-time resource consumption, we find the best way to, to mix them uh, uh, together. Um, so you actu actually, it allows you to differentiate at the same time, still use a shared infrastructure. I see. So your example was CPU, yeah. what you do on storage and network. Yeah, so, so, so basically what we've done, and I, I guess I didn't really talk a lot about VM Turbo, but I guess I should. Uh, so, so in general, um, this is a pretty complex problem because a lot of dimensions. Um, in fact, if you look at the whole stack, there is a whole bunch of things that one needs to control to be able to assure the performance of the apps all the way from apps down to the physical data center. And, and, and what we've done is we actually, actually created a abstract model, which is a marketplace of buyers and sellers. And we implemented an economic engine that runs on top of this marketplace and makes these decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we actually done is that we represented every resource as a commodity that is being traded by between these buyers and sellers in a supply chain. And we make decisions based on what's the best place to buy the resources, the combination of resources that you need. Now, 
solving this problem on top of an abstraction allows us to actually plug in any resource, CPU, storage, network, actually Java heap size, uh, web server transaction uh, rate or response time, all the way down to physical power and cooling consumption, and use the same economic engine to solve any one of these problems. So we may not have plugged in every possible dimension, but it's a fairly easy thing for us to, to do that given the right control points and the right monitoring endpoints. Yeah, that's cool. Last question. Uh, VM migration. Yeah. You said you monitor how much CPU, RAM they're consuming, and if you think uh, they're given uh, gold instead of bronze. So do you dynamically shrink and shrunk and move, or do you tell to user and user decides, or how, the, how that automation works? So, so our, our goal is to provide a closed loop automation and actually execute all of the actions. The whole point is that if you want to run a, not only a software defined data center, but a software controlled data center, you actually need software to execute the decisions uh, without having to ask a user on, on, on what to do. So we actually execute all of these actions. Uh, we you know, change the flavor on, 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 on a VM instance. We live migrate uh, the VM to a different node uh, in a uh, real time huh? okay. session. Yeah. Sure, thanks. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was too easy. So, so um, I, I actually um, run the Advanced Solutions Group as part of our dev team and, and uh, uh, what my team does is basically has been working on the next feature. So what we've been doing for the past, we've done most of our OpenStack work about two plus years ago. Uh, so what we've been spending the last two years with is, is um, um, we, we released our Docker control capabilities about more than a year ago. And then over the past year, we've been actually applying the same uh, technology to manage uh, workload running in a Kubernetes cluster or in an OpenShift slash uh, Kubernetes cluster on top of OpenStack or on top of a uh, hybrid cloud, uh, Amazon or, or Azure. Um, so we actually solve the same problem. Um, uh, in fact, it's even cooler, I think. Uh, in, in the case of Kubernetes, we um, uh, contributed a, in, in open source a service that plugs into your Kubernetes cluster. It runs in a pod and, and uh, it's, it's constantly feeding uh, information about what uh, pods are being started, how the pods are utilizing resources, um, and where they should run into our uh, platform that again could be a uh, private or SS based instance. And in real time, we feed back that information into um, the, the Kubernetes controller and we're able to either scale up, scale down uh, the number of uh, replicas as well as decide where those pods should run and also when do you need to spin up an additional <coughs> node in your Kubernetes cluster. And we are actually integrating with a number of uh, orchestration tools um, from Red Hat, Canonical, and others on how to actually uh, provision the additional uh, cluster resources if you need to, with the understanding of the, under, of, of the underlying, say, OpenStack environment that you might be running from. Does that make sense? Okay, anybody else? Yes? We have time, I think we've run long. <laughs> Right, <clears throat> so um, that's a very good question, and it's, I think, uh, probably the most interesting part of our, our technology, um, where we are basically representing any of these constraints as a commodity, and we are um, in real time calculating a price for every instance of every uh, commodity. Um, and, and if you want to represent the Boolean constraints, you could do a you know, price of $1 versus a price of an infinite number of dollars. But in between those two, you can actually uh, create your own pricing function and define how any one of these constraints uh, should be priced. Now, the advantage, uh, and really probably the most important uh, aspect of our technology, is, is, is creating this common abstraction as a price, because that allows you to trade off conflicting constraints with each other. 
Um, so, so for example, um, we are taking advantage of uh, flow instrumentation from Open vSwitch, feeding it into our system, and dynamically understanding affinity uh, between different applications, different VM instances that are running in your environment. And, and, and what our software does, it actually uh, drives those workloads to run closer to each other by understanding both the overlay as well as the underlay network topology, the overlay traffic and the underlay network topology. But that becomes a conflict because if you move them closer together, they're more likely to run into storage or, or, or compute uh, bottlenecks. So by having a common price abstraction, you're, you're allowing each instance to decide what is the best trade-off for them to run, and this is really what runs in our uh, engine, this constant trade-off between uh, various constraints, that you move them as close as possible without con con causing or by preventing a computer and a storage bottleneck, but minimizing, for example, network latency. And there's a number of other trade-offs between you know, public cloud costs and, and, and how do you provide uh, the you know, most compliant resources, but scale your infrastructure. So, so we actually are constantly resolving a multi-dimensional uh, constraint problem across the whole data center by abstracting every business constraint into a price of a commodity and making decisions based on a combination of those. Okay, and, and of course, we'll be around if, if, uh, if you guys have more questions. Uh, I'll be here and we'll be at the booth as well. We've got a booth on the marketplace, so feel free to come by. Happy to give you a more detailed demo or a deeper dive into our technology. Thank you.